Let's talk about a drink that's been showing up everywhere, from hipster cafes to yoga studios to Instagram stories and supermarket shelves. Kombucha. It's got the fizz of soda, the health halo of green juice, and the mysterious vibe of something brewed by ancient monks. You've probably heard claims that it's good for your gut, boosts immunity, balances hormones, detoxes your liver, and helps with just about everything under the sun, including diabetes. But is that actually true? Before we continue, I'd like to tell you about Daya Salon, a powerful blend of 13 natural ingredients, each carefully selected for their proven ability to support healthy blood sugar levels, enhance insulin sensitivity, and promote overall wellness. You can read more on diacelon.com. Now imagine this. You're standing in the health food aisle. You see a stylish bottle of kombucha with words like raw, organic, gut health, and probiotic power practically glowing off the label. You're curious. Maybe you've heard people say it helps with blood sugar. Maybe you're living with diabetes or prediabetes, or maybe you're just trying to take better care of your health. You crack it open. You take that first sip. It's fizzy, sour sweet, a little funky, maybe even refreshing. But what actually happens inside your body in the minutes, hours, and days after that sip? Is kombucha your friend or your enemy when it comes to managing blood glucose? Because here's the thing. Kombucha isn't just a drink. It's a chemical cocktail. It's tea, sugar, yeast, bacteria, acids, and sometimes even fruit juices or sweeteners all rolled into one bottle. And for people with diabetes, especially those who need to keep a close eye on every gram of sugar and every carb that enters their body, the impact of that harmless-looking sip can range from completely harmless to surprisingly problematic. And most people don't even realize it. Whether you're a diabetic trying to expand your drink options, someone curious about fermented foods, or just trying to separate the facts from the hype, you're in the right place. Buckle up because you're about to learn what happens in your body after just one sip of kombucha and why that sip might matter more than you think. So what exactly is kombucha? At its core, Kombucha is a fermented tea, typically black or green, combined with sugar and a SCOBY, which stands for Symbiotic Culture of Bacteria and Yeast. This culture consumes the sugar during fermentation and produces a mixture of organic acids, probiotics, enzymes, and trace levels of alcohol. What you end up with is a slightly sweet, tangy, effervescent drink that has been around for thousands of years, originating in China and eventually making its way to Russia and Eastern Europe before reaching global popularity. On the surface, it seems healthy. After all, it's tea-based and full of live cultures. But here's where it gets tricky. Sugar is essential for the fermentation process. Without it, the SCOBY can't thrive or convert the tea into kombucha. While much of the sugar gets eaten up during fermentation, not all of it does. And in commercial varieties, sugar is often added after fermentation to enhance taste and prolong shelf life. That means you could be drinking something that tastes healthy, but actually contains just as much sugar as a soda, depending on the brand. And that brings us to one of the most important and overlooked aspects of kombucha. Not all kombucha is created equal, especially when it comes to sugar content. Some brands offer raw, unfiltered kombucha with as little as two to four grams of sugar per eight ounce serving but others, especially flavored varieties with added fruit juice, cane sugar, or artificial sweeteners, can contain 12, 15, even 20 grams of sugar per bottle. That's a huge deal for someone with diabetes. In fact, just 15 grams of sugar can raise blood glucose by 30 to 50 points in a short amount of time, depending on your body's insulin response. So when you take that first sip of kombucha, what happens next is heavily influenced by how much sugar is actually in it. If it's a high sugar brand, that sip might act more like a soft drink than a health tonic. On the flip side, if it's a truly low sugar, well-fermented batch, your body might respond quite differently with a slower, steadier metabolic reaction thanks to compounds like acetic acid and beneficial T polyphenols. That's why reading labels isn't just a suggestion. It's absolutely essential for people managing diabetes. So now let's zoom into the body and talk about what happens physiologically just minutes after that sip hits your tongue. 
First, the sugar begins to be absorbed almost immediately through the digestive tract, especially if you're drinking it on an empty stomach. This causes a rise in blood glucose levels. In someone with type 2 diabetes, where insulin sensitivity is impaired, or in type 1 diabetes, where insulin is absent without injection, this sugar spike could be sharp and problematic, especially if your blood sugar was already elevated. But here's where kombucha's acetic acid steps in. Acetic acid, the same compound found in vinegar, has been shown to slow gastric emptying, reduce carbohydrate absorption, and improve post-meal insulin sensitivity. It acts almost like a natural blood sugar buffer, helping to smooth out the spike you might otherwise get from sugar. So if you're drinking a low sugar kombucha with strong fermentation and plenty of acetic acid, your blood sugar rise might be minimal or even delayed. That's a huge advantage, but it only applies if you're drinking a kombucha with minimal added sugars and a robust fermentation profile. Now let's talk about one of kombucha's biggest selling points, probiotics. These live beneficial bacteria are the stars of the show when it comes to gut health, and they're a major reason people turn to kombucha in the first place. But how do they impact blood sugar? Recent research has uncovered strong links between gut microbiome health and insulin resistance. A healthy gut microbiome can improve nutrient absorption, reduce systemic inflammation, and even produce metabolites that enhance insulin signaling. In fact, people with type 2 diabetes often show reduced microbial diversity in their guts, meaning fewer good bacteria and more harmful ones that contribute to inflammation and poor glucose control. When you sip kombucha, you're introducing strains of lactobacillus, gluconacetobacter, and other probiotics into your gut. While one sip won't change your microbiome overnight, consistent intake of probiotics from kombucha and other fermented foods can gradually shift your gut health in a more favorable direction. That means better digestion, reduced bloating, and potentially more stable blood sugar levels over time. It's a long game and not an instant fix, but it starts with that first sip. But that's not all that's happening inside your body. Kombucha is made from tea, black, green, or sometimes a blend. And tea itself is loaded with bioactive compounds that can affect metabolism. Green tea in particular contains a powerful antioxidant called EGCG, epigallocatechin galate, which has been extensively studied for its ability to reduce blood glucose and enhance insulin sensitivity. Black tea, on the other hand, contains the aflavins and theorubigans, which have anti-inflammatory and lipid-lowering effects. These tea polyphenols work in the background after you sip kombucha, helping to lower oxidative stress, a big contributor to insulin resistance and diabetic complications. Over time, they may help lower fasting glucose levels, reduce inflammation, and improve endothelial function, all crucial for someone managing diabetes. So with each sip of kombucha, you're not just getting probiotics, you're also absorbing compounds that might be subtly improving your metabolic and cardiovascular health in the long run. Another thing to consider is kombucha's carbonation and acidity, both of which can influence digestion and appetite. The bubbles from carbonation can stimulate the digestive tract and create a feeling of fullness, which may help reduce overeating, a huge factor in glucose control. Additionally, kombucha's acidity can help lower the pH of the stomach, enhancing protein digestion, and potentially slowing the absorption of simple carbohydrates. This could further help with blood sugar control, especially if consumed alongside a meal. However, kombucha's acidity can also backfire for some individuals, causing stomach upset, bloating, or acid reflux, particularly for those with gastrointestinal sensitivities or who are prone to heartburn. It's also important to remember that kombucha is unpasteurized, meaning it contains live cultures. While that's generally a good thing, it may pose a risk for people with weakened immune systems. So even though that first sip may offer several benefits, it's not for everyone. And the key is always listening to your body. Finally, let's circle back to something that surprises a lot of people. Kombucha does contain alcohol, albeit in very small amounts. During fermentation, the yeast breaks down sugars and produces ethanol, typically resulting in about 0.3% to 0.5% alcohol in most store-bought brands. That's less than a glass of orange juice left out too long, 
But for people with diabetes, especially those who are on medications that interact with alcohol or who are sensitive to even trace amounts, it's worth being aware. Some homemade kombuchas or raw, unregulated brands can ferment longer and reach alcohol levels over 1% or even 2%. If you're drinking kombucha regularly, it's a good idea to choose brands that are clearly labeled and tested for consistency. Most people won't experience any noticeable effects from the trace alcohol, but for those in recovery or on specific medications, it's a small yet important detail to factor into your decision. So now that we've broken it all down, from the sugar content and fermentation process to blood glucose response, probiotic effects, and everything in between, the big question still stands. Is kombucha safe for people with diabetes? And what really happens after just one sip? Well, here's the truth. Kombucha isn't a miracle elixir. It's not going to reverse diabetes overnight, and it's not a free pass to drink something sweet without consequences. But it's also not the enemy. It's a nuanced, complex beverage with both risks and rewards. And that makes it different from most sugary drinks on the market. Yes, it does contain sugar. Yes, some brands are basically glorified soda in disguise. But at the same time, kombucha offers potential benefits that go far beyond its sugar content, including acetic acid that helps blunt glucose spikes, antioxidants from tea, and probiotics that can improve your gut health and potentially your insulin sensitivity over time. The most important thing to understand is that not all kombucha is the same, and not everybody reacts the same way. Your experience will depend on what kind you drink, how much you drink, your current blood glucose levels, your insulin sensitivity, and even your gut microbiome. So instead of labeling kombucha as good or bad, the smarter approach is to see it as a tool, one that can either support your goals or derail them, depending on how and when you use it. Start with a small serving of low-sugar kombucha, ideally one with four grams of sugar or less per serving. Drink it with food, not on an empty stomach, and test your blood sugar before and after. See how your body responds. Everyone's glucose response is different, and that's why personalized monitoring is so powerful. You might find that a modest glass of kombucha after dinner actually keeps you satisfied, supports digestion, and helps you stay away from more harmful cravings. Or you might find it spikes your glucose more than expected. And that's valuable information too. And remember, kombucha doesn't have to be an everyday thing. For many people with diabetes, it works best as an occasional treat or a functional digestive aid. You're not missing out by drinking less of it. You're just learning how to harness its benefits without triggering unwanted spikes. And that's the beauty of becoming a more informed, empowered health consumer. You don't have to fear the foods or drinks you love. You just have to understand them better. So if you're new to kombucha, take it slow. Do your homework. Read those nutrition labels. Look for short ingredient lists, low sugar counts, and raw or traditionally fermented options. Better yet, try making your own at home, where you can control the entire process from start to finish. The sugar, the tea, the fermentation time, everything. In the end, that first sip of kombucha might not change your life, but it can start a ripple effect. One where you become more aware of how your body reacts, more curious about your microbiome, and more mindful about what you're putting in your body. And over time, those small steps add up. Because managing diabetes isn't about perfection, it's about progress. And sometimes it starts with something as simple as asking, what happens after just one sip? If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe for more science-backed health content, and drop a comment below letting me know your experience with kombucha. Did it help your blood sugar? Did it surprise you? Or are you still figuring it out? I'd love to hear from you.